untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl game to video. Today we're taking a look at a Naya Colored Tokens deck featuring Minsk Beloved Ranger as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three legendary human ranger that is joined by Boo, a legendary 1-1 one, one red hamster creature token with Trample and Haste. We can also spend X mana and then until end of turn, target creature we control has a base, power and toughness XX and becomes a giant in addition to its other types, can only be used as a sorcery. So unlike some of the previous Brawl decks I've featured recently, this deck isn't really built around Minsk too much, we're more of a Naya tokens deck with a lot of token synergy, and we just happen to have Minsk as our commander, but could be replaced with something else, can easily play a game without ever casting our commander, and if it gets answered we're not too upset. So let's take a look at the rest of our deck. At one mana we've got Legion's Landing, generating a lifelinking 1-1 vampire token, can transform into Aldanto, a land that can generate additional vampire tokens, then Paladin class is one of the many Anthem effects in the deck, because our main game plan is to generate lots of 1-1 tokens, and then pump them up with various enchantments or plus one counters, and Paladin class is one of them. Then we've got Swords to Plowshares and Lightning Bolt as efficient removal spells. The Redeemed can potentially double the number of tokens we control with the 6 mana activated ability, which is incredibly powerful. And then Mikaeus can distribute plus one plus one counters on the entire team. Moving on to 2 mana, we'll see plenty of creatures and sorceries that can generate multiple 1-1 one -one tokens, starting out with Clarion Spirit, a 2-2, that can generate a 1-1 one -one flying spirit creature token whenever we cast our second spell each turn. Then the Militia Captain is a 2-2, saying at the beginning of our upkeep, if we control 4 or more creatures, it transforms into the Westvale Cult Leader, whose power and toughness are each equal to the number of creatures we control, and then at the beginning of our end step, gets to make a 1-1 one -one white and black human cleric creature token. The Intrepid Adversary is a way to pump up our team by spending a bunch of mana after playing it to pick up those Valor counters and then our team gets plus one plus one for each Valor counter on the Adversary. Kabira Takedown can be played as a land or as a removal spell. The Light Scribe can pump up our team thanks to Magecraft whenever we cast an instant or sorcery and our deck has plenty of instants and sorceries to enable it. And then we get to some of the token makers with a Race the Alarm making two 1-1 one -one white soldier creature tokens at instant speed. Servo Exhibition makes two artifact servo tokens at sorcery speed. Dragon Fodder makes two red goblins. We've got Forbidden Friendship making a 1-1 one -one white human creature token and a hasty red dinosaur token. We've got Krenko's Command also making two goblins. And then Sapperling Migration makes two green sapperlings, can also be kicked for four additional mana, in which case we make four sapperlings instead. And then the Verdant Command makes two tapped squirrels at instant speed, can also gain three life, maybe exile a card from a graveyard, or counter a loyalty ability of a planeswalker. Then we've got the Song of Freilis, which is incredibly powerful if we have a few tokens in play, as all our tokens will turn into mana creatures, letting us tap them for any color of mana, great for emptying out our hand. And then on the third and final chapter of the Enchantment Saga, we get to put a plus one plus one counter on each creature we control, and those creatures also gain Vigilance, Trample and Indestructible until end of turn, allowing us to attack with the entire team. Then we've got a bit of mana acceleration with Into the North letting us search up a snow land, which is why we have those snow basics in our mana base, as well as Arcane Signet and Cold Seal Heart as more mana acceleration that can also fix our mana. Then Join the Dance also makes two 1-1 one -one white human creature tokens, can be flashed back for 5 mana. Lightning Helix has more removal, and the Sky Knight Vanguard can also generate multiple white soldier creature tokens when it attacks. Then moving on to 3 mana, of course we can sometimes play our commander. We also have Blade Splicer making a 3-3 Phyrexian Golem creature token, and Golems we control have First Strike. Then Unbreakable Formation can make our creatures indestructible until end of turn, and if we cast it in our main phase we can put a plus one plus one counter on each creature we control, and they also gain Vigilance until end of turn. Wedding Announcement from Crimson Vow can generate multiple 1-1 one -one tokens and eventually transforms into Wedding Festivity, giving our creatures plus one plus one. The Welcoming Vampire is a great source of card advantage as a 2-3 flyer that can draw us a card whenever a creature with power 2 or less enters a battlefield under our control for the first time each turn. Then the Glorious Anthem will give our team a plus one plus one. History of Benalia makes a 2-2 two -two Knight token with Vigilance on the first two chapters and on the third chapters those Knights will get plus two plus one until end of turn. Cultivate gives us a bit of a ramp and mana fixing, a nice 2 for 1. 
then battle for Bretagard is quite synergistic here, as on the first two chapters we make various 1-1 tokens, and on the final chapter we get to choose any number of tokens we control with the different names, and for each of those tokens we get to create a token that's a copy of it, so we've got plenty of variety in the tokens, so the third chapter can be very powerful. And then March of the Multitudes has Convoke, meaning we can tap untapped creatures we control to help pay for it, and then creates X 1-1 white soldier creature tokens with lifelink at instant speed, so it can be very powerful if we have somewhat of a board presence. Then moving on to 4 mana, we've got a few enchantments to double the number of tokens we generate, with Anointed Procession as well as Parallel Lives, which are a lot of fun if they can stick around. We've got Conclave Tribunal as another Convoke card that can exile a non-land permanent the opponent controls, then Felida Retreat can put plus one plus one counters on the entire team with Landfall or generate 2-2 two, two cat tokens. We've got Release the Dogs making 4 1-1 one, one white dog creature tokens. Battle Screech generates 2 1-1 one, one white bird tokens with flying. Also has Flashback making us tap 3 untapped white creatures we control so we can often cast it and flash it back in the same turn. Then we've got Sram's Expertise generating 3 1-1 one, one colorless servo artifact creature tokens, and we also get to cast a spell with mana value 3 or less from our hand without paying its mana cost. Then Zariel can give our team plus 1 plus 0 and haste until end of turn, or generate 1-1 one, one red devil creature tokens that deal 1 damage to any target when they die. We've got Esika's Chariot with the nerf from Alchemy, still quite powerful. A 4-4 vehicle with a crew cost of 2 is joined by a 2-2 cat token, and when it attacks can copy any token we control. Then we also have a couple Planeswalkers at 4 mana, like Arlen, generating a pair of 2-2 wolf tokens with the minus 3, and then a plus 1 makes it so our creatures come into play with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on them. We've got Huatli, which can plus 1, generating a ton of loyalty equal to the number of creatures we control, and then we can often use the minus 8 ultimate on the following turn, which gives us an emblem which draws a card whenever a creature enters a battlefield under our control, which is a ton of fun. A Jani can distribute plus 1 plus 1 counters on our team and give them Vigilance. And then we've got some other cards here, like Heroic Reinforcements, which can represent a ton of damage out of nowhere, making a pair of white soldier creature tokens. And then until end of turn, creatures we control get plus one plus one and haste. And finally, Outlaw's Merriment is another fun enchantment that can generate a variety of creature tokens in our upkeep. Then at 5 mana we've got Trostani, giving our team plus one plus one and making a pair of one one white soldier creature tokens with lifelink. Then Mirari's Wake is incredibly powerful, giving our team plus one plus one and doubling the mana that our lands produce, so great to empty out our hand, and also very good with our commander. Then Tender Shoot Dryad makes a 1 1 Sapperling in our upkeep every turn, can ascend to get the city's blessing, at which point our Sapperlings get plus two plus two. We've got Divine Visitation, turning all our tokens into 4 4 angels with flying and vigilance. Then we've got the Cathars Crusade, saying whenever a creature enters a battlefield under our control, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature we control, which can get out of hand if we're making multiple tokens at once. Then Angel of Invention is a 2-1 with Flying Vigilance and Lifelink, giving our team plus one plus one, also has Fabricate 2, meaning we can choose between putting two counters on the Angel or making two 1-1 one -one servo tokens. Then Venerated Loxodon is another Convoke creature that we can play pretty early on by tapping untapped creatures to help cast it, and when it enters a battlefield it puts a plus one plus one counter on each creature that convoked it. And then topping off our curve we've got Harmonious Archon, a 4-5 flyer that when it enters a battlefield makes a pair of 1-1 one -one human tokens, and then non-Archon creatures have base, power and toughness 3-3, which plays to our advantage as all those plus one counters and anthem effects will still stack on top of that. Then at 6 mana we also have Camaraderie, drawing us X cards and gaining X life for X is the number of creatures we control, and those creatures also get plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn. The Immortal Sun does shut down all Planeswalkers, but we don't have too many of those, and then also gives our team plus 1 plus 1 and provides extra card advantage and gives us a nice discount. And finally Elish Norn, a 4-7 with Vigilance, giving our team plus 2 plus 2 and opposing creatures minus 2 minus 2 permanently, so it can be a nice board wipe. And then our mana base is pretty simple, lots of dual lands, of course our snow-covered basics to go with into the north, and then a fun uh, utility land I guess is Colony Garden, making an 0-1 plant token when it enters a battlefield. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, our hands a little land light, more than I would like. I do have a green, red and white mana, so that's good. Can probably cast a Conclave Tribunal early on. So if I draw two lands, this hand's okay. If I draw three lands, then we can cast everything. Yeah, I guess we'll try it. The fact that we have both Procession and Parallel Lives is a little bit too good to pass up. So this can name green. 
And I'll play the Servo Exhibition, I guess. Could have also waited to uh, double those tokens and just played a tap land here. Frexen Arena is something I would like to exile, so I can Tribunal play a tap land. And then next turn, player doubling enchantments. And then we'll see if we want to play another first, or if uh, I'm happy with one of them before playing Tender Shoot, for example. Opponent playing with Villas, so can expect quite a bit of ramp to get to 8 mana. And yeah, we'll uh, play one of these. Nighthawk Scavenger, that's fine. So I'll go with the Tender Shoots, might already prompt a Sweeper if her opponent has one. Uh, so we get to make two Sapperlings. Looks like it might be Spot Removal for Tender Shoot instead. Nope, not yet. Gifted Aetherborn, alright, so... Lots of Lifelink Death Touch creatures and a Grasp of Darkness deals with our Dryad. So there goes our steady stream of tokens, although the captain with procession is still pretty good here. So we can play those two. And hopefully captain survives. And if not, we'll have to draw more token makers, which there's plenty of in the deck. Right. Opponent eliminates the captain, sadly. And attacks with the scavenger. Alright, history is going to make a lot of tokens here, so that's a good draw. Four knights, and do I want to play Minsk? Probably not necessary. Feels like our opponent already has to kind of cast a sweeper here to deal with the Sister of Banalia. And also wouldn't really be adding much to the board. Varagoth, another Death Touch creature that can search up any card, including maybe a Sweeper. I'll fetch, even though keeping it for Felder Retreat is an argument to kind of keep it uncracked. And what do we need here? Doesn't matter too much. Ooh, a Seekers Chariot, excellent. So... Do I want to attack with my tokens? Probably not worth it. I'll play a Chariot. And then, uh, yeah, next turn we could deal a ton of damage. Bastion of Remembrance, that's fine. Opponent passes as they're preparing for a big turn here. Song of Freilis, also pretty nice. Although if I want to use Song in combination with Minsk, it has to happen at sorcery speed, so I wouldn't be able to attack with the Vigilance creatures and tempt them for mana to sink into the ability. But um, this still looks pretty good. So I'll tap the smaller tokens. Do the cats want to attack? Let's see, 8 times 4... Yeah, probably worth it. And we'll copy a knight. Which makes 4 more. Their opponent's not quite dead. Drains me a bunch with Bastion. So a sweeper here would be unfortunate, but I still get to follow up with Minsk at least. And yep, there's a Crux of Fate. Okay. 
get to make a lot of hamsters, but only keep one. And then uh, we'll pump for four. Very much possible Isika's chariot should not have attacked. Since uh, the sequence of opponent trading for it and then having a board wipe punishes me for it, even though I guess I wouldn't have any token to copy right now. So not the most effective Song of Freilies. Can still play Minsk and then pump our existing token. Which is indestructible. Heartless Act killing Minsk once again. And Bolas a Citadel with 10 life. So I can replay Minsk. Wouldn't really accomplish much, so I think I would rather Anthem plus into the north. Get them low so they hopefully can't leverage the Citadel too much. And murders my boo. And a Josu, although without kicker, luckily. Alright, there we go. Wedding announcements, great. Makes for 2-2 two -two tokens right away. That's what we were waiting for. Fraxin Obliterator. Quite powerful, but not going to be enough to survive if we can just deal lethal here. Can Blade Splicer make a whole bunch of tokens too, for what it's worth. And sure, we'll attack. And our opponent concedes. Alright. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing the partners, a red-green deck. Our hands promising. Can kick things off with the redeemed. Since we want a board presence to leverage Song of Freilies. Clarion Spirits could be nice, although I think I'll still play the Serve Exhibition first. Hit for one. And then next turn, play Song of Freilies. So we can potentially uh, tap those tokens for mana and cast something else. The advantage of Clarion Spirit first is that I could already make a Spirit next turn, but it's a bit more vulnerable to removal as our opponent plays Targnar. Alright, so Song of Freilies into Clarion Spirit or Welcoming Vampire. Looks good. So if I play Welcoming Vampire, next turn I could go Clarion Spirit and Minsk or just get the Immortal Sun out there. So if they kill Welcoming Vampire, it's not a disaster. Yeah, it seems fine. There is an argument for trying to get immediate value from the Vampire. But same can be said for Clarion Spirit as well. Alright, get to untap. Creatures make mana, and this is going to be a powerful turn. I guess we'll play Clarion Spirit first, and then Immortal Sun, just to get that extra spirits. And, uh, of course, if we play Immortal Sun first, then Clarion Spirit would be too large to trigger the Vampire. So we've got our card draw engine in play. Hopefully we can dodge a sweeper, and then next turn we get the third chapter of Song. Get to start drawing extra cards with Immortal Sun, so it's going to be quite backbreaking. 
Plus I could also start activating the Redeemed to double my tokens. So this also illustrates why we don't really need our commander. Targonar attacking could indicate a sweeper incoming, or they might have a pump spell which also would synergize with the partners. Probably no reason to block, since we're pretty far ahead. Alright, Anger of the Gods, sadly. Gonna wipe most of our board, still have our welcoming vampire, which is a big deal. So... Less devastating than it could have been, but still feel like we're in a good spot. So Arlen, a little bit of a nombo here with the Immortal Sun, but that's okay. Can still play Minsk and draw a card thanks to the Welcoming Vampire, despite our token having plus one plus one. And Cultivate's not bad here. Pick up some more lands. And attack for six. Alright, so feels like we're in a pretty good spot, considering our opponent cast Anger of the Gods, which is typically very powerful against the token strategy. Opponent with a Renin 7, although there is an Immortal Sun in place, so they wouldn't be able to activate it. it so the opponent might have missed that interaction, and promptly concedes. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Sorin, Vengeful Bloodlord. And our hands, okay. Could be a little awkward with the mana here, since I have to decide between green or white. And I can need both. But I'll try it. And then hopefully I pick up the missing lands in the next turn or two. Alright, so this can be green. And then could play the Light Scribe first or Migration to set up Loxalon a little faster. Yeah, we'll go with the Migration here. And then... Next turn, could technically already play Loxalon. Although we might be better off playing Wedding Announcement. Curse of Silence. Could name our commander, I suppose. That's fine. Don't really need him. And then next turn, Anointed Procession will be a good combo with the announcement. So I'm only going to attack with one token, I think, since I would rather have an extra token as opposed to drawing a card. Is that true? Nah, maybe for this turn I actually want to draw a card. And then next turn with Anointed Procession I might only attack with one token. Okay, so nice that we get to play more enchantments that dodge most removal spells. I guess there's no reason to play it now. So I'll attack for one. Play Procession and make two tokens. Crossroads does come into play tapped, so I won't be able to play my Tender Shoot right necessarily. And Johnny makes a 2 2 token. So don't have a way to enable Magecraft, so it seems like a good turn for either Tender Shoot or Convoke Loxodon. Could still finish off a Johnny, I suppose. Would we'll just miss out on a few tokens from Procession. Probably worth it. And we'll draw a card with the announcement instead. Alright, so hopefully there's no sweeper in our future. Although the Mortal Sun could also be nice. Getting to make a pair of 4 4 sapperlings. Although if they deal with Tender Shoot, those will shrink down. Right, opponent does have the sweeper, sadly. Get to follow up with maybe our commander. Doubling the token's a little awkward. But um don't see a great alternative. Sure. Opponent 
opponent sacrifices a curse to draw. And we'll name probably green. And a Kabira takedown. Can probably do better. Dark Ritual giving access to 6 mana for a Bolas a Citadel, that's powerful. Although it looks like there are two lands on top. Okay, so what's my turn? Sadly, given that I went for double green instead of double red, I cannot play Zariel here. Immortal Sun also makes my Planeswalkers a little awkward. Could go for a Jani and Light Scribe instead. And get some counters going before... Eventually playing a mortal sun. I will teach you to with me. Standard bearer opponent down to ten. Six mana plus whatever they have on top of their deck. And it's going to be an Exquisite Blood, which is part of some two-card combos. Soren gives their team lifelink, but uh, looks like it's not enough to give them the victory here, and our opponent scoops it up. All right, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing Turgrid, a God of Fright, and our hand is promising. Turn to Arcane Signet is always nice, and then we could play turn 3 Procession perhaps, and then play Felda Retreat and a land in the same turn to generate multiple tokens. Cold Seal Heart, I guess I can also play here, and then I'll name White. As we can potentially tap the Arcane Signet the same turn we play it. Opponent foretells a card. And yeah, we'll play Anointed Procession. And then next turn, hopefully, Fell at a Retreat. Black has a difficult time answering enchantments, so if we can get this in play, I'll feel pretty good. Inscription makes me discard two. I'll hang on to Retreat plus a land. So in hindsight, playing Arcane Signet would have worked out better. Vampire's nice, but I'm just gonna go with the Retreat, play a land, make two tokens. And then... We're less afraid of a discard effect now that we're almost empty-handed. Although Skull Raid gets to draw a card as well. Alright, so... Every land we draw is good, and every spell we draw we can play, except for some of the 6 and 7 drops. Innocent Blood makes me sacrifice a token. And there's a land, so we can play Minsk, and uh, we will make two legendary tokens, so one of them will die. That's okay, and then I'll play my land and make a couple more tokens here too. And then I'll pay two life so we can pump up our token as well. So with the next land I might put plus one counters on the team, we'll see. Mindstone, that's fine. So even if the opponent has a sweeper, we can easily rebuild thanks to our powerful enchantments. Which is the strength of this deck. Krenko's Command will make four tokens, although I feel like we're better off just pumping with Minsk. So, gotta use this now. And then if they kill our token, that's fine by me. Opponent has got the triumph to make me sacrifice a 2-2 two -two token. So they're at 7. Dark ritual, okay. So opponent's got access to 6 mana now. And a 
Crux of Fate will wipe the board. So luckily we still have our Krenkos command to rebuild. Divest is gonna miss. And join the dance is fun too. So sure, we'll make a couple tokens. Can always flash back, join the dance, so we're not necessarily overextending despite making eight tokens. And a land to put plus one counters on the team here would be quite devastating. Opponent is out of sweepers and scoops it up. On to the next one. On the play, facing Edgar Charmed Groom. So Vampire deck, my hand is okay. A little lackluster in terms of token makers, but there's plenty of those in the deck we can draw. So I'll try it. And then, given that we're lacking token makers, probably fine to play this tapped. Then turn to Akan into the north to ramp. As our opponent starts out with a Knight of the Ebon Legion. Now that I drew Join the Dance, I'm more tempted to play that so we can next turn Song of Freilies and get some extra mana going. And Dusk Legion is all at the play. Could also double block the Knight here, so opponent's unlikely to attack. They still did, so I guess I'll take the trade. Even though my tokens would have been good with Song, I can still play Song of Freilies and then play into the north. Or I might be better off waiting an extra turn. And then for now just go with uh, the Redeemed plus into the north, get our mountain. No attacks. Welcoming vampires, quite threatening. Ooh, but an Elish Norn I could maybe ramp into thanks to Song of Freilies. So this turn I can Song Flashback join the dance. Or I could play my commander. Both are valid. I'm kind of liking join the dance here to be more mana efficient. And then next turn I could play Elish Norn. Etchings can pump their team. Take three. So time for Elishnorn. And then I can still attack for a bunch. Could also activate the Redeemed's ability here. Double my tokens next turn. Edgar's probably not gonna cut it. Yeah, Song of Freilies is a busted card. Was very strong in Dominaria Limited, but in these token decks, even in Constructed, it's quite good. I remember practicing for Pro Tour Dominaria, trying to build Song of Freilies decks. Although... I did not end up uh, registering a Song of Freilies deck because Goblin Chain Whirler was everywhere. So, even a Vigilance, I can attack and still activate the Redeemed. For what it's worth. So does our opponent have a sweeper, as Elish Norn takes care of the 1-1 token right away. Purveyor. Definitely could have played it safer and just kept up the instant speed unbreakable formation to protect the team, but don't expect the Vampire Tribal deck to have too many board wipes. Alright, so that was a satisfying ending to the series of games, and yeah, I'm kind of surprised how well our deck performed. 
didn't really imagine this being too powerful because, you know, it's not a busted deck really building around its commander too much, which is typically what's required for a good brawl deck. But I guess we also didn't face too many of the tier 1 brawl decks out there. So yeah, good time with Naya tokens. Want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.